Holy fuck, what's that? Well, it's the Bamse Mark IV sort of prototype. Uh, this, if it works, if I manage to uh, finish it all the way, is better than the Mark III because it's simpler and it's easier to activate. It's quicker to build and so forth. It's a little cheaper. It only uses one hose clamp. It does not use the screw puncturing method. But instead, to activate it, you would grab it with your hand and just push right here on the end of it, which will puncture the CO2 cartridge. You could also whack it against something hard, and it would go. Let me show you how it works. This is the same bicycle hose, just a regular inner tube. It uses the same kind of hose as the Mark III, and well, surprise, surprise, the same kind of CO2 cartridge. But what sits inside is similar, but a little different. Uh, let me show you the blueprint for it. Well, we'll just do it like this. As you can see, it's still using an acetal plug, with the difference being that the bottom hole is smaller. It's 1.5 millimeters wide, and it's not going all the way through the bottom. What's happening here is, I uh, hope you can see it. Where's my flashlight? Here it is. <laughs> What's happening is that. Instead of a screw, inside the hole here is a fixed nail. This was actually the method used for puncturing the first bounces. Well, the Mark 1s, I suppose. These dem put specific demands. It's harder to get the, the, the timing or the delay right with them. But if you can get them to be consistent, well, it's actually better than the screw ones because it's Cheaper, simpler, and easier to activate. Uh, this nail inside here is not just any nail. Let's go get a pair of pliers and pull it out. What kind of nail to use is a whole subject in itself. As you can see, this nail is straight walled. This is actually a nail used in nail guns. A very slim one. I believe that it's 1.4 millimeters thick. And the end of it... Come on. There we go. The end of it is cut rather than tapered. So it's a very, very sharp angle to it. Which is actually pretty imperative to get consist consist consistency. Yeah, well, constant consistency from the bouncer. Because as you push, let's see here, used. Uh, what happened to the one we. Here we go. Yeah, because what happens when you push a CO2 cartridge over here is that the nail will penetrate the seal and get lodged in the hole that it made for itself. And. Uh, as you can see here, with a screw type opening, just make a little hole. Because you're using the screw, you're moving the puncturing pin just a little bit with a half turn. With this, well, perhaps you would move the puncturing pin, yeah, one or two millimeters to create this, 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 uh, the seal hole, this, this hole in the seal. With a nail, you would push it slightly further and use more brute force and force it straight through the seal, leaving the nail lodged inside and uh, regulating the amount of gas that escapes with, uh, well, how good the seal between the nail and the seal is. I've tried a few different variants. This one, as I said, is just a framing gun nail. Another kind I've used with success is, I'm not sure what it's called in English, but in Swedish it's called a uh, 
Listnol, which translates to uh, how would you call it? Nol is needle, and list, what do you call it? Uh, the kind of small. Shit. This right here is a list, small piece of wood used next to doors and like the like. Let me just go and get an example of that. No, I won't. Anyway, a list knoll is just a slim, straight needle without a head on it. Had good success with those as well. But, uh, as I said, this is a prototype. And so, still in the experimental stage. The idea here is that the nail will sit maybe two or three millimeters sticking up to here, perhaps, inside the unit or the puncturing device. And uh, the CO2 cartridge will sit resting against it, like this, inside the tube. And when it's time for, well, to use the bamse. You would squeeze the CO2 cartridge over the nail, puncturing it, plop, which in turn will release gas through the outer tube here uh, into the outer shell. So if you have watched the Mark III video, you'll be familiar with this. This is just any kind of tube, a rubber one, uh, wheat braided, fit here is not very important, even less important here than in the, in the Mark III. Same tube though. Let's see, this is even the one I used to use. No, 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 everything's on the table at the same time here. Yeah, yeah. Same kind of tube anyway. Uh, a hole is drilled here, five millimeters or so, going through the whole tube. <sighs> As you can see, so that it clears the upper block and releases pressure to the side. This can be skipped if you are in a hurry, but the risk that you make, uh, th that you uh, face, if you don't drill it, is that pressure could build up between the plug and the CO2 cartridge. And the CO2 cartridge, which, it, which is not secured, could uh, pop out and fly away, which is not good for anyone. Or, well, you know. Anyway, this is the blueprint for it, the way to assemble it. It's just uh, from the end, with the hole closest to it, just push the CO2 cartridge in. And making sure that it rests inside the hole here, so that it's centered, just carefully push it in. There's no risk of puncturing here, it takes a, a bit of force. Well, I suppose there's a little bit of risk. And uh, that's actually it. This is a piece of bicycle hose. Was this the one I prepared? Yeah, any kind. You can uh, experiment with the length of it, but uh, we would push the unit inside it. Fold the remainder of the hose up. Of course, the length of this, this is the minimum length that's required. Uh, you can always experiment and you use it to make it longer. Or, well, double fold it, what not. You could even, uh, you call it, tie it off at the end here with a specific knot. Refer to one of the earlier videos on how to do it if you want. But the few times I've tried this, I've had good results with just folding it up. After this, we we'll take, well, let's just loosen this up a bit. Fold this up and put one hose clamp around it. And uh, what's so nice about this design is that this hose clamp really does all the sealing. So the risk for leaks here is very small. The usual problems with the bumps is always that there's a small pinhole leak somewhere that lets just enough pressure out to keep the, the burst disc from exploding. So, this uh, holds the end plug in place. 
and it seals between the plug, the hose, the hose and the bicycle tube. And the beauty of this is that the, uh, the outer gasket itself keeps the CO2 cartridge in place. So how you would activate this, and remember, this is a working prototype, but if it works, it's pretty nice. Could be pretty nice, rather, is that you take it in your hand, whack it against something hard, or push it with your thumb. Or maybe two thumbs. We'll see how this goes. Well, two thumbs. Okay. <laughs> I believe in this design. It's cheaper, easier to make, and well, it's faster to activate. If you just have a little bit more power in your thumbs than me. Oh, fuck me. Here we can see the CO2 cartridge actually flew out, but you can also see the firing, or whatever firing pin, the puncturing pin here is actually stuck in the CO2 cartridge, and this is what uh, reduces the amount of gas that leaks out. Perhaps in a future iteration this should be secured inside the tube by a, some means, but uh, my experience so far has been that this has stayed in place all the time and, uh, well, you could use a slightly tighter hose I suppose, or just accept that this might fly out, but this is as simple as it gets. Goody, goody.